Hey boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher and today I need your help. You're going to help me predict. Now when good readers predict, that means that they're using the clues from the text, that means the writing, also with clues from their own thinking and they make good guesses about what they think will happen next. All right, the story you're gonna help me predict today is called Lost, whoops, Lost Cat. And it's by C. Roger Mater. And this story is all about a lost hippopotamus. <laughs> no, it's not. It's about a lost monkey. No, you're right, it's about a lost cat. Now, I want you to go and pause the movie or the video and run downstairs or upstairs or down the hall and get a piece of paper and a pencil or a crayon or a marker. Ready? Go! Okay, are you back and you're ready to help me predict? Okay, let's read Lost Cat and I will tell you when to use that paper and pencil. Here we go. By the way, be really good listeners and observers of the picture. Okay. Ever since Slipper was a tiny kitten, she lived with a little old lady in a little old house in a little old town. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was a cat, that's what I would want to do. Snuggle up to the person who loved me in their soft, soft slippers. Slipper was well cared for. Tasty food, a brushing every day, and a little rug to sleep on right beside the lady's bed next to the fluffy slippers she loved so much. Life was good. One day, Mrs. Fluffy Slippers moved to live with her daughter and family. Moving day was hectic. Boys and girls, the word hectic means busy or a lot going on. What do you think, because this is such a busy time, what do you think might happen to Slipper? Did you say she might get left behind? Let's find out. In the commotion, everyone forgot Slipper. Slipper chased the moving van for miles and miles. Finally, she got tired, slowed down, and lost the trail. When Mrs. Fluffy Slippers and her daughter realized that Slipper was not in the car, they raced back to the empty house, but the cat was gone. lost. And boys and girls, I love the way C. Roger Mater draws Slipper. Really, really small in the midst of these big, tall trees. And that kind of tells us that she's all alone. She's all alone. And how do you think she would be feeling? What would be a good word to describe how she would be feeling right now? I'm thinking she might feel lonely or nervous, or afraid, or fearful? Did you say any of those words? Slipper spent a cold night all alone. She had tried her best to find Mrs. Fluffy Slippers, but now she would look for someone new to adopt. Ms. Muddy Boots was near the road when Slipper passed by. Hi, kitty. She said, offering Slipper a fish. Slipper had not quite finished eating when a dog charged out of the yard. She quickly jumped to safety. She could have adopted the woman, but that dog? Never. Mrs. Iron Shoes came clop, clop, clopping along the road. The rider asked Slipper if she would like a lift. But Slipper took one look at that horse's hooves, thought about her own soft little paws, and ski daddled. That means got out of there. Mr. Cowboy Boots was downing a lemonade when he invited Slipper to ride in his truck. But with the smell and all the noise, Slipper meowed, no thanks, and continued her search. High Tops jumped out from behind a bush and yelled, I'm taking you home! 
Slipper felt a flash of fear and in a heartbeat, she fled. Mr. Big Boots arrived with a roar. He scooped Slipper up, scratched her ears and put her in his saddlebag. After a scary ride, they screeched to a stop at a red light. They were in a town, so she hopped out. Crouching under a mailbox, Slipper watched the people passing by. When she caught a glimpse of a pair of shiny shoes, she knew she had to follow them. I'm wondering, she sees tennis shoes and sandals and boots and, and work shoes, and I'm wondering why does she want to follow these in particular? What about these shoes make her want to follow them? Well, just by looking at them, it looks like they might be from a little girl. Maybe she's thinking, a little girl might take me home to her family and they might love me the way Mrs. Fuzzy Slippers did. I don't know, let's see. When Miss Shiny Shoes arrived home, Slipper looked up at her and meowed sweetly, May I adopt you? The little girl opened the door and they walked in together. This home had a family and Slipper felt so safe and comfy, she decided to adopt them all. Miss Shiny Shoes led her down the hallway. All right, now here is where you're gonna help me predict. Take out your piece of paper. There's one more person that lives in this house that we haven't met yet. The little girl is going to take the kitten slipper into this person. Can you draw a picture of the shoes that you think this person is wearing? Pause the video and draw the shoes that you think this person that we haven't met yet is wearing. Ready, go. Okay, did you make a good drawing? Can you hold it up and show me? Super, let's see if you were right. At the bedroom door, she said, Grandma, look who followed me home. It was Mrs. Fuzzy Slippers. Did you draw that? If you didn't, that's okay. You made a good guess. But if you drew Fuzzy Slippers, wow, what a good job listening and thinking you were doing. That night, Slippers slept on the same old rug by the same old bed, snuggled up with the same old slippers. Life was good. Boys and girls, good readers always make predictions in their stories. And if you were to read that with your mom or dad, you wouldn't have to draw anything. But if you were thinking in your brain, hmm, I wonder who she's gonna meet next, that is good enough just that you're thinking those things while you read. Because reading isn't just listening, is it? It's thinking. I hope you loved that book about the lost rhinoceros, <laughs> the lost cat. And we'll see you next time.